Now, you've probably heard of the Great Reset that is promoted by the World Economic Forum, where they're telling us that in just a few short years, you're going to own absolutely nothing and you're going to be happy. Strange thought. But from my study of their actual documents, it seems like there will be two different options. You will either be living in the country and you don't go along with the system, or you will be on UBI. Now, the question is, what is UBI and how does this fit in this whole perspective? Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. To begin with, the World Economic Forum is, as I've said in the past, it's basically a consortium of large corporations, basically the largest corporations on planet Earth, coming together with government leaders like presidents and prime ministers and so forth, and then uniting potentially even with the Vatican as the Pope himself has said, thank you that you have been seeking our counsel in these matters. And so you have a mixture of, we might say, the kings of the earth, the merchants of the earth, and the Vatican coming together and telling us about the future of economics for planet earth and how this is going to impact potentially every single one of us. And one of the aspects of this is something called UBI, which stands for Universal Basic Income. And Universal Basic Income is exactly what it sounds like. It is basically offering, not offering, simply giving people money for doing absolutely nothing. And I've got to say right off the bat, doesn't that sound great? It sounds wonderful. If the government would just give us all money to do nothing, and uh, you might say, well, what would people do then? We're going to get to that in a minute. We already know what will happen because we've already seen what happens with that. But what do we see with universal basic income? Now, at least 12 countries have already in some form or fashion tried this out. Maybe not on a universal scale within their countries, but at least kind of, kind of test runs on this. Here we have in the journal Nature, the title of this article is Daily Briefing. Spain begins an epic economics experiment in universal basic income. They picked certain people. People would be given upwards of $1,100 per family and they could do whatever they wanted with it. Some of the places they point out that have historically done this are places like Alaska, Germany has tried, the Netherlands, Canada, Brazil, we even see, for instance, Finland. And I think this is an interesting case study. So what they did is they took people who were unemployed in Finland, uh, at least some of them, and what they did is they said, we're going to give you money. We're going to give you a certain amount of money that you can spend on whatever you want. And it's different from standard welfare because often welfare is something that you're given to the government, but they tell you, look, if you make a certain amount of money, you will no longer be getting a check from the government. So Finland was doing, because universal basic income is something that they give it to you regardless. You just get it. If you make more money, doesn't matter. That's just gravy on top of what you already made. And for the poor people, it takes care of them to a degree. Degree, uh, one degree or another. I, along with probably most human beings, believe that uh, we who have been able to have jobs, make an income, most of us are happy to pay taxes to help out those who are truly, absolutely in need. People who have disabilities, severe disabilities. Listen, I'm happy to help those people out. I'm thankful that we do that, do that for uh, people in our country here and in many countries of the world this happens. And so we're not talking about this. We're talking about giving money to people who may not even need it, just giving everybody extra money. The rich, the middle class, the poor, everybody gets money just handed to them by the government. But in this case, they said, listen, to these people who are unemployed in Finland, we're gonna give you this cash and even if you get a job and you make no matter how much money you make from now on, you're still going to get this money. So uh, the question is, because people say, well, the reason maybe it's so hard on people is because you take it away from them if they get a job. So people don't want to get a job. So you're dis disincentivizing them from actually getting a job. So they said, well, let's see what happens if we give it to them, even if they get a job. So do you think these people ended up being more likely to get a job when they were given free money? Do you think they were like, well, hey, even if I get a job, this will just be, as I said, gravy on top. We're gonna find out at the end of the video. What have we seen? Now, we already have one case study that was done beginning in the year 2020. You may remember that something happened. Well, there was this 
massive pandemic and as a result of it, all of us under a certain pay scale were just given free checks in the mail. People were being paid more money than they would have been making, some of them anyway, more money than they would have been making in their jobs to not work. And, and what happened, I, I, well, <laughs> this is what happened, right? You remember, you have riots on the streets and, and we saw that this was like some of the greatest time of riots in my lifetime, right? And so what was happening? You say, Chad, are you saying that it was fully just people because people were getting paid to do nothing? No, I don't think that's the only factor, but I think that's one of the massive reasons why people were going on a riot in the street because they were getting paid to do nothing. And so you have a lot of time to uh, riot and so forth or protest or whatever it is. And I'm not saying there aren't proper things to protest for. There are, right? Uh, but regardless, what do we see that maybe that old adage, that old saying that people say, that idleness is the devil's workshop or playground or something along those lines. And evidently it is that if you pay people to do nothing, they find something to do. And often what they find to do isn't the best thing that they probably should be doing, or at least for their own health and for the health of society. If, if you polled people, how many people would be in favor of a universal basic income? A poll, according to Gallup, and Northeastern University in April, June of 2019, so just a few years back, the percentage of people who support a universal basic income in the UK was 77% and in Canada was 75% and in the USA it was 43%. And if you notice this, this was before the pandemic took place. So before the pandemic took place, you have places like the UK and Canada where the vast majority, three quarters of the population already wanted a universal basic income. The United States, it was still a minority because many Americans still believe that hard work is an important part of character and life and success and fulfillment and all of these things. And uh, being that America historically has been kind of more of a had more of a religious undertone, kind of a historically Christian ideas and values or Judeo-Christian values. They believed that that work ethic was something that was, it was given to us by our creator. I mean, this, this was at least a historic belief. So it makes sense that we have uh, less of a belief that humans should just pay, be paid to do nothing. But at this point, you may think, well, every country kind of has their own ideas. They can choose to do what they want. And theoretically, that is true. But we see nations wanting to come together and unify. We see right here an article from the World Economic Forum from the horse's mouth. It says, we must work together to build a new world order. And then they tell us in the article, this is how we can do it. One of the things it does is it talks kind of negatively about what the Western world has been doing in their international politics and so forth and speaks positively about what China has been doing. And I find that to be very interesting. Not that I defend everything the West has been doing. I'm, I'm not here to do that. That's not really my purpose. But I couldn't at all defend what places like communist China have been doing. Now, they're talking internationally. They're not saying what they're doing internally, like, you know, killing tons of people for religious beliefs and so forth. They're not talking about that. Hopefully, anyway, that's not what they're talking about. Uh, but they're saying in their international affairs, China's doing a wonderful work. And this is kind of questionable to me that they seem to have really positive perspectives of China. And I'm not putting down Chinese people, but what this country has done. You may have seen that some of the top business people in the world are calling for a universal basic income or a universal basic wage. Not only can some of the top business people might be calling for this, but we also have this article right here. According to the World Economic Forum, Pope Francis says it might be time to consider a universal basic wage. So here we have again on the official worldeconomicforum.org website, it's weforum.org, an article that says, here's the Pope's prescription for resetting the global economy in response to COVID-19. The article goes on to talk about that the Pope through an encyclical has put his stamp on the Great Reset. And they're talking about this particular encyclical right here called Fratelli Tutti from Pope Francis on the Fraternity and Social Friendship. And it's interesting that this is, you know, one of the places where we see this uh, this term right here that the United Nations Organization and likewise of economic institutions and international finance so that the concept of the family of nations can acquire real teeth. So they're talking once again about nations uniting. It speaks, this article speaks down on 
too much personal liberty. Interesting. And it talks about the idea that free markets are maybe not the answer. So if we if free market is talking more about capitalism, so they're talking about maybe changing the structure to something very different and not having too much personal liberty. And the World Economic Forum says that this is specifically speaking or the Pope putting his seal or his mark on this great reset. Very interesting. This man seems to be uniting with the World Economic Forum in the Great Reset, at least ostensibly it seems the case. And so could it mean that if they unite together, they can in a better way make it so that soon maybe you too will own nothing and be happy? Doesn't that kind of sound like what we had during the Dark Ages, the feudal system, where most people owned absolutely nothing and they just worked for other people? people, right? Sounds very, very similar. He points out two groups of people that might really benefit from this are street vendors and number two, small farmers. Now, if you haven't seen my video on what the World Economic Forum potentially thinks, at least in their article or two articles kind of speaking on this issue about who isn't going to go along with it, you're going to want to see that video. I'm going to put a link to it at the end of the video. You don't want to miss that one. So I want to get back to that question about Finland. So when Finland began to give out money, they began to give out money and they said, listen, there's no strings attached. These were unemployed people. We'll give you money. And uh, if you find a job and make money, you're going to still continue to get the money. Did it help them? They thought, well, hey, I can get a job and then make more money on top. The answer is no, it didn't actually help people to go get more jobs. If you're given free money, most people probably would be less inclined to work harder because what, what's the point? You can simply get money. This is just one example. There may be other examples out there that I don't know about. That could totally be the case. But listen, if you haven't seen our video where we go into detail about what is taking place with this whole idea of country living and the Great Reset, that video is going to be right here. You're not going to want to miss that. And if you don't know anything about any of our other videos, we have all kinds of videos on health and homesteading and uh, natural remedies that have been compared head to head in scientific literature against the pharmaceutical medication. And in many cases in the research have been shown to be just as good or better with significantly less side effects. Check out our videos on that. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the bell notifications, hit the subscribe button. God bless and have a fantastic day.